<laughs> Greetings, paper demons. I'm reporting live from the Shrunken Headman Con. So if you don't know the Shrunken Headman, they're a community of artists at San Jose State. And they're all studying animation and illustration. So at this con, you'll find both students and alumni alike. Let's ask them a little bit about what types of struggles they've experienced as artists and how they've overcome them. Well, at the moment, I'm kind of just doing my own stuff. Um, I'm trying to apply to like story positions or uh, PA positions, anything art related. Um, I recently just left the job uh, doing a, or production management. I work at Stormy and I do 3D modeling and I model furniture for a little app game and it's a lot of fun. So right now I'm doing freelance and contract work no for wants. a couple different companies, no but I've also done comp uh, work for uh, Disney, I've done work for DreamWorks. Uh, worked at GoPro, uh, worked on NVIDIA. Uh, I've kind of done a little bit of everything. I've done product and gaming and film. Uh, so it's been nice to wear uh, different hats. Well, first and foremost, I like to focus on my personal work. Um, I like to show in galleries and conventions and stuff. Uh, but I also do background design work on the show Bob's Burgers on Fox. So that's sort of like what pays the bills and increases my skills on a daily basis, which is really great. So that's primarily what I do, my personal work in that. Um, I teach the only four-year animation program for high school students in the Bay Area. So there are uh, programs in the Bay Area that have animation classes, like they teach animation, but I'm the only one that teaches it for four years. It, that is a hard balance. My number one thing I try to tell myself is to give myself a lot of grace. You know, if I really want to work when I get home but I'm too tired, that's just one day and you can let that day go and try and get something done the next day. You know, like not doing something one day doesn't mean you're never going to do something ever. And uh, weekends are great for doing that. Break time at, at work, like taking a lunch just to do a quick little watercolor can really help reset your mind and you never know what you might get out of doing something like that. My wife says it's done. <laughs> uh, I will say, I mean, there's times where it's like, um, I use this line a lot and it kind of been, it's been sticking with people, is like, don't overcook a chicken. You know, it's, um, I think sometimes for me, I like the work that I do personally, I try to keep it lively and loose. And uh, if I know that it's kind of got a feeling, I kind of leave it alone. But if I sit there and noodle over it forever, it starts to lose its uh, vibrancy and its liveliness. And I think it just comes over time, you know, after a while. It's like when you do it so much, you just, you kind of know who you are and what you do. And um, it takes time, you know. It, when I was a, a student, I would just just overdo things to death. And, um, you know, just, 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 I think it would take time. I think you need to give yourself, like, maybe give yourself a deadline or something, because I understand it's good to be a perfectionist. Like, you make your artwork look perfect but also you need a deadline because you can't keep like laboring over it and I feel like sometimes if you're you're too much of a perfectionist you're just never gonna show your artwork to anyone so give yourself a deadline once you reach that deadline that you just you have to show it to the world <laughs> I guess patience you know like it may feel like you're not producing enough work in a given moment, but once you get to the end of a year and you look back on what you've done, you'd be really impressed with yourself and how much work you do. So just be patient and keep working. I would, speaking about mental health, I think I would tell myself that like, kind of, kind of what this podcast is about, like it's normal how anxious you feel and like you don't have to feel that way. Like you could get help for it, you could ask you could just open up about it, talk to other friends about it, because I feel like all that fear and anxiety really held me back in school. And I feel like without it, I could have like opened up more. I could have like had more inspirations, maybe. Um, so I would definitely just tell myself to like take care of yourself, take care of your mental health, and try to make yourself happy, and it'll reflect in your art. I would say, don't worry about uh, who or how popular your art is going to be or how popular you're going to be. Just do it for the love of doing it and everything else will follow. 
I would say uh, keep your uh, connections close. Make sure you get out, get out there and uh, show your work and not be afraid of um, just keeping your work to yourself. I know as artists we're very sensitive. We like to keep the work for ourselves and not show it, but it's always very important to um, get out there and show your work. Why is it important to show your work? It's important to show your work because uh, you got to get your stuff out there. I think people that... You know, people there's like an Instagram right, that they kind of show their best on. work, a little, you know, a label over something. It's like, don't worry about it. Just show your work, and the audience will come. Your voice should be heard, you know. And uh, I think some people are afraid to like show stuff, and you got to get over that. Draw, draw in a cafe, and show people. People are always interested to see what people are doing, especially when it's artwork or something creative. Well, there you have it, Paper Demons. Some awesome advice from professional artists in the industry. Let me know in the comments below which piece of advice resonated with you the most. I want to take a moment to thank our artists, Danny, Rachel, Alicia, Lawrence, and Jackson for doing these interviews for us today. Now, be sure to hit subscribe because there is a part two of this video coming that also includes interviews with students who are participating in the Shrunken Headman community. I'll see you then.